Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world, and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. follower of nature and all its great joys. Um, are you OK? Ah, I have never been better. Here, I've made you something. Uh, thank you. That is a deluxe apple core necklace. Been eating those apples for two weeks. I've gone green, Jem, you know, eco-friendly. And you're not allowed into my green zone unless you abide by the laws of the bountiful Barney. Which are? No MP3 players. <laughs> Try this. You can make your own music. Oh. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, yes. Uh, uh, and, and, and are those plastic you're wearing on your feet? No, no, not allowed. Here, try these. OK, Barney. Bounteous Barney. Oh, bounteous Barney. Look, I really admire what you're trying to do, but don't you think you're going a little bit too far? <laughs> I mean, these are great for living on a desert island, but can I really run for a bus and knees back home? Oh, OK, OK, I guess you're right. It's just that I can't believe these barrier reef animals beat us to it again. What do you mean? Well, of course, they recycle everything, don't they? Just have a look at how far these guys go with their recycling. Nothing, and I mean nothing, goes to waste. Waste not, want not. <laughs> They're squelchy, they're slimy, they're Jem's most disliked animal in the whole wide world, but they are the super keen green machine, the sea cucumber. Ew! I wish someone would recycle them. Gemma, sea cucumbers have feelings too, you know. <laughs> Believe it or not, without these cool cucumbers, or cukes as their friends call them, the ocean bed would harden and loads of species wouldn't survive. Oh, so now you're claiming they're ocean heroes too. Just call me cuke. Sea cuke. Well, they're often referred to as the earthworm of the sea because they're constantly eating sand and anything else that sticks to it. And then they, well, they poo the bits they don't want out. Which is mostly sand by the looks of it. Yeah, but this is pretty clean poo. The sand is always cleaner when it comes out. And it's this constant digging, shuffling, eating and pooing that breaks up the seabed, keeping it well aired and oxygenated. And this sand airing also stirs up the sand, allowing other animals to feed on any morsels that come to the surface. Oh, yeah. So you're saying that loads of animals rely on the sea cucumber to survive? Exactly. I told you. Without the super sandy sea cucumber, we would have lifeless hard ocean beds. In fact, just one sea cucumber alone can nosh more than two tonnes of sand in one year. Whoa, that's like... bags of sugar. I know, that is what's known as remarkable recycling. Wow. Next. <laughs> the tiger shark. Sleek, cool, streamlined, fierce and the ultimate ocean garbage man. Yeah, but surely the ultimate ocean hunter as well. Oh, yeah, but for this greedy guts, the fun is not in the hunting, but in the clearing up. He'll eat anything. Well, he's certainly got the gnashes for it. Look at them. Yep, his teeth are highly specialised to slice through flesh and bone, which makes him the perfect candidate for ocean dustman. They've found all sorts in his garbage guts. Licence plates, tyres and bottles, tin cans, tennis shoes, plastic bags, um, a human head. Are you serious? You name it, it's been found in a tiger shark's belly. Yeah, so I see. Oh, what is that? A rotting, stinking turtle, to be precise. 
Surely this is extreme, isn't it? I mean, couldn't you take his pick of the ocean banquet? Why choose rotting turtles and tin cans? Well, why bother chasing after live food when he's got a taste for waste? He's the ultimate green machine. He doesn't let anything go to waste. Yummy! So just like the sand-chomping sea cucumber, our gluttonous tiger shark has a taste for other people's waste. <laughs> Isn't it obvious I'm conducting Christmas tree worms? Silly. You come up, you go down. You come up, you go down. Out in, out in, up there, up there. They can only up and down. Thank you. I, I'm the silly one. Me. Right. Hmm, why are they so shy? Well, they're just very sensitive to any movements and disturbances. Even a little shadow is enough for them to play peekaboo. Well, why bother coming out at all if they have a nice, safe, comfy hole to hide in? Well, they still need to feed, so they catch little food bits in their mucus-coated feathery arms. Ah, oh, well, they certainly brighten up that piece of lumpy coral. They do more than that, you know. These mini feather dusters deliberately find a piece of damaged coral to settle down and make a home on. Well, why would they do that? There's loads of healthy coral they could live on. Well, they can't live on top of living coral because it's already occupied, so they find an empty spot to live in. It's a typical reef waste-not-want-not setup. See these big mouth parrotfish? Hello! Ah, yes, with their parrot-like gnashes. Yeah, well, they are coral destroyers. They have a strange appetite, all right. They eat coral, they chomp and they go, leaving some of the coral a bit worse for wear. Well, this is a perfect little home for the Christmas tree worm. Give them a few centimetres and they'll take it. They settle in the chomped bit and the coral grows back around them. It's Christmas tremendous. Ah, oh, that was truly terrible. So was yours. <laughs> So the tiger shark clears up unwanted rubbish and the Christmas tree worm makes its home in unwanted space. They're an unlikely connection, all right, but our waste disposal truck, the tiger shark and Christmas tree worm are linked because they both make sure nothing is wasted. <laughs> hey, let's do the crab dance. OK. You ready? Yeah. Hands in the air. Like you have leg hair. Juggle and lift. For the water to shift. Scratch and lift. And wave to Dave. <laughs> hands out, hands together. Ooh, uh, look at the weather. No wonder MC Crabster is chilling on the anemone carpet. All that leg and arm waving is exhausting. Well, these little guys are called porcelain crabs. Now, they may look like they're dancing, but they're actually filtering the water, taking all the debris out and noshing at the same time. They must always be noshing then. They're never still. Well, that's why they have those mucus-coated feathery hands. They comb them through the water, catching passing bits of food, which they then scrape off and put into their mouth. Yummy! A bit like having snot-covered net hands. Yeah, kind of. And while he's running his feathery feelers through the water, he's clearing up waste particles and helping to keep the water nice and clean. So, like the Christmas tree worms, these feathery filterers sort through the water, catching and recycling anything they can eat and, at the same time, cleaning up waste. So, who else is linked to our wormy waste lovers? <laughs> Wow, spooky. Is this a shipwreck? I love those. Yep, this one is called the Yongala wreck. It was a passenger and cargo ship with 122 people on board that got lost in a cyclone in 1911. But now it's a world famous wreck site which is home to loads of different animals. Wow, hey look, you can see the portholes there. That's the stern. Oh, and the rudder. Oh, it's so eerie. Hey, I reckon that's the mast. And, and those must have been the cabins or the cargo holds. <laughs> and there's an electric fan. Oh, and the toilets. It's like a whole new playground for creatures like our turtle. Oh, yeah. So the whole ship has been recycled into an ocean habitat. I must say, these ocean lot are true recyclers, aren't they? Yep, it's home to all sorts of different animals. There's a ray swimming alongside a school of trevally. Why do you reckon the fish like wrecks so much? I mean, there's loads of real reefs they can hang out in. Well, it's mainly because a wreck provides a solid surface in which new species can attach and grow, like titchy plankton, worms, bait fish and crabs. This attracts bigger fish and before you know it, you have one big shipwreck party. So, like 
like our cute Christmas tree were, they're making the most of empty and derelict space to create new homes and communities. Yep, another green star for our ocean gang. OK, it's time for a reef cap. It's very seasonal, Gem. Well, you know, just keeping with the green theme, those ocean waste recyclers are so cool, they're putting me to shame. Well, it suits you. So, how did we get from the sea cucumber to sea rex? Our sea cucumber is extremely green. This is recycling gone mad. He eats loads of sand and then poos it out and cleans it at the same time. What about the tasteless tiger shark? He'll nosh on literally anything, including human heads. Ooh. And like our wrapping porcelain crab, Wormy uses his feathery hands to comb through the water for food, whilst at the same time helping to keep it nice and clean. And also connected to our Christmas tree worms are our fun-loving wreck gang. Now they don't let a sunken ship go to waste. Gemma Tavani, Gemma Tavani, pick up your coconut phone, over. I got it. So, who's our next refuse lover? Over and out. <laughs> Oh, don't look at me. I'm a hermit crab and I'm naked. Oh, I need to get dressed. Of course, I never get new outfits. They're so last season. I always find a vintage shell lying around. Like I always say, why buy new when there's perfectly good second-hand shells available? Ah, this will be a perfect fit. Ah, home sweet home. Peace and quiet. Oh, just put the telly on. Uh-oh, not so peaceful. He's being crab attacked. Crab attacked. One shell. Two crabs. Who will be the victor? And play the end prize. Crab Wars. Heroic Hermit Crab is hiding from this ferocious sand attack. Great sand throwing technique, but is it working? I think Heroic is staying put. He knows when to stay down to survive. Having survived the sand attack, he's back on his feet. He's a tough cookie, this one. He won't be giving that prize away easily. Oh, and Combat Crab is going for the back attack. Heroic is showing immense strength carrying both him and Combat. That is quite amazing. Oh, and what a turn up! He's thrown him off with a spectacular move. What strength, what agility. Combat claims the grand prize of the white shell leaving our loser, Heroic, with a poor consolation prize. Oh, dear. Contender 2 really has got the booby prize of a bit of abandoned pipe. Poor guy. He put up a brave fight, but he's not looking too comfortable. Ouch. I think he's been driven round the U-bend. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's just starting to hurt your voice. Oh, yes. You know, it just goes to show that hermit crabs are so keen on reusing old shells, they'll do anything to claim their prize. And although it's not an ideal solution, they'll even make do with old bits of pipe lying around. Again, our waste is their game. First there was the shipwreck, and now bits of pipe making homes for crabs. Just like our wreck-loving creatures, for the hermit crabs, someone else's trash is their home. <laughs> Right, I just can't get it right. I don't know, but I'm itching to stick this bit of algae on. Now, how do I look? Um, a little too green, I'd say. Yeah, I think I just need a little bit of white scraggy stuff here. A white ball of random fluff here. Just give it a clean first, health and safety. Oh, I love dressing up. <clears throat> Ooh, baby. I reckon these crabs have got a little carried away with the ocean dressing up box. Hello. These crabs are called decorator crabs, and the name says it all. They spend most of their time decorating themselves in bits and pieces of the reef for disguise. Whether they prefer the pebble dash look... The more traditional leafy green attire... These stone-like accessories... Or the mad purple hair. Whatever they pick allows them to skulk around unnoticed by their enemies. So they're basically playing dressing up to disguise themselves with outfits that mean they can completely blend in. Watch it. Yeah, clever, eh? I wish we could do that. Think we'd look even weirder? You're not wrong. And of course, they're also recycling bits of the reef to use in their outlandish outfits. Ah, looks like fun. Yeah! 
but shouldn't they be off scuttling around the shore or leg dancing for food or searching for shells like our other crab recyclers? Not all crabs are the same, Gem. They all have their own unique personality, but they do all have one thing in common. Introducing the, the Green, Green Team. Team. Porcelain Grab, the raptastic water washer. Hermit Grab, fearless in pursuit of his recycling greens. And of course, the decorator Grab. He's the arty one, but in his quest for the perfect outfit, he cleans up debris. Team Grab, they're green, keen, and never mean. Wow, you're right. These crabs are all true recycling superheroes. Although they both have completely different tastes in outfits, our heroic hermit crab and decorator crabs both use any opportunity they can to recycle spare bits of the reef. <laughs> Uh-oh. Meet the frightening frigate birds, also known as pirate birds. <laughs> They take a rather unscrupulous approach to recycling. In fact, they're really rather scary. Whoa, so I can see. Although they can't swim or walk or take off from the water, they're amazing flyers. Yes, they're what I like to call swoop-tastic. And their wingspan is over two metres. Wow, that's like one Barney and half a Gemma. And they have a real taste for already recycled food. Stand by, this is grossly grostastic. <laughs> Birds like these dozy boobies uh, no. Hello. swallow any food they catch, ready to uh, regurgitate it later on for their chicks. <laughs> what? What, in other words, they spew it up for their babies? That is like Mr. Gross from Gross Road in Grossville. <laughs> But it gets worse. You'd think the fact the boobies have already swallowed the grub would prevent anyone else from nicking the food, right? Yeah. Uh-uh. Not when it comes to these fearless and sneaky frigate birds. <laughs> when they spot a bird carrying food home to the nest, they chase and harass it to make it spew up this already chomped food. Well, that's even more gross. That's Mr. Gross on Gross Road from Grossville on the planet, Gross. <laughs> Look, he's a true pilfering pirate. Oi, frigate bully bird, get off him! Hey. Well, they're also linked to the more heroic hermit crab because they both steal the hard work of other animals. Yeah, except that the hermit crab recycles a spare and empty shell while those pilferers steal needed food from the mouths of baby chicks. It's not quite the same thing. So, not all recyclers are heroes, it seems. Let's hope our next contender is a keener greener. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's an ocean snowstorm. Yep, this is called coral spawning. It's basically the coral laying eggs into the water for the eggs to be fertilised by other corals. It's spawning time, it's spawning time, it's spawning time. Oh, it's spawning time. They release thousands of eggs, and they're not the only ocean spawners. Reef fish like this surgeon fish here... We love you! ..and the colourful cuttlefish are also egg-laying. Uh, oh, sorry, just distracted by those butterfly fish playing football. <laughs> or should I say noseball? On your edge, son. <laughs> it's mine! Um, they're not playing noseball, Jen. They're pinching a cuttlefish egg. Why? To eat it. No, the mummy cuttlefish is just there. That's not fair. Well, you know how it is in the ocean. <laughs> Nothing bobs along on claim for very long, and eggs are no different. This cuttlefish egg will make a very tasty snack for the butterfly fish, and they're not the only ones enjoying an egg feast. The porcelain crab will nosh on a coral egg or ten, and these snappers are having a bit of a feast on this surgeon fish spawn. Oh man, poor mummy fish. Well, actually, they don't mind too much. The coral fish and cuttlefish all lay hundreds or thousands of eggs, some as many as a million. Mm -mm, that is a lot of lunch boxes to pack. They know that some of them will float away or get eaten, so they lay loads and loads of eggs to make up for it. So it's a bit of a bargain giveaway. The fish allow for the fact that some will end up as fish food and lay extra. That's so clever. It's another waste not, want not moment. Nothing in the ocean goes to waste. And fish allow for that even when they're spawning. And just like the frigate birds, these egg gobblers are pinching someone else's belongings. OK. It's time for a recap of our radical recyclers. Empty shells are precious objects in the crab recycling world, and I don't blame them. I mean, who wants an end bit of pipe for a home? Decorator crabs are constantly updating their homes, but they're always sure to recycle in the process. 
The frigate birds are so not interested in conservation. Well, apart from their own, that is. They only qualify as recyclers because they eat recycled food. Gross! And the rest of the ocean community don't seem to mind nicking other fish's eggs either. At least the fish know that extra eggs mean they can't nick them all. Good morning. Ah, oh, as we all know, the reef is a pretty and cheery place most of the time, with fish going about their daily business. But, like all communities, it does have a dark side. Yikes, where's the happiness gone, Jen? With the naphid isopods. Dun dun dun! The what? Naphid isopods, otherwise known as deadly parasites. Dun, dun, dun. They swarm around the coral looking for healthy fish blood. Dun, dun, ooh, that's gross. Well, where are they? I can't see any deadly things. Well, they're almost invisible, but put a super duper mega microscope on them and they look something like this. Wow, yeah, they're like warriors. And what does happen when these isopody things find some healthy fish blood? They're doomed. <gasps> oh, no. But surely there must be someone who can help. Enter the superhero cleaner, Ras. Yeah. What? You mean this little fish? Hey, this is no ordinary little fish, you know. These little fish are the reef's courageous cleaners. This is their superhero dance. Their fishy friends are covered in parasites, but luckily they won't have to wait long for the cleaner fish to rid them of all evil. Uh, OK, so how do they do that then? Well, they're not called cleaner rats for nothing. They nibble all the nasty parasites from their fishy friends. Hang on a minute. No fish is going to go around cleaning other fish for nothing. We all do things for money and food. What do the cleaner rats get out of it? They get a right old feast. What, you mean they like eating parasites? Yeah, they love them. I mean, why else would they munch on more than 1,000 isopods a day? Wow, that is a healthy appetite. Without the cleaner rats sucking up these evil nasties, there'd probably be a lot of poorly fish in the reef. And like all those reef egg eaters, the wrasse survive by eating stuff from other animals. But in the case of the cleaner wrasse, their fishy friends are very grateful to be nibbled on. <laughs> Talking of recycling body items, be prepared for the strangest example of recycling you will ever hear about. Guaranteed. Meet the sea squirt. Yo, what's up? A squirt? Yep, they're tubular creatures that hang out on the reef, pumping in water and bits of food. What does it do, exactly? Well, not much, to be honest. It just stays in one spot for its whole life. It's a lazy squirt. Reminds me of someone. Hey. <laughs> Well, actually, as it happens, you're onto something there, Jem. I am kind of related to him, but then so are you. What are you talking about? OK, this creature may look like the most basic of all creatures, but according to evolution, there is a big family tree that goes back millions of years. And on this tree, humans are related to the sea squirts. Huh? Yeah, when they're babies, they have a little spinal cord, which puts them in the same family tree as us. Although they do eat it when they become adults. What? 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 Hang on a second. I don't know which I find the strangest. The fact we're related or the fact they eat their spinal cord. And their brain. And their tail. Waste not, want not. Oh, man. Now that is extreme recycling. But there's not much squirting action going on. I want my money back. Yet another yucky body part recycling connection. The wrasse with their penchant for parasites and the sea squirt who eat their own brain. Pretty <laughs> Polly, ah! Pretty Polly, Polly want a cracker? <laughs> the parrotfish. By day, reef rock chompers. By night, serene snot sleepers. You know what time it is. No, <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> it's bedtime. <laughs> Snot sleepers. Yep, see that cocoon surrounding him? Yeah. Well, that's the parrotfish's very own deluxe snot sleeping bag. It looks more like a cobweb. Nope, it's snot, all right. <coughs> this is the parrotfish's bed for the night. 
once they found a nice little space to snuggle into, they actually produce their very own mucus sleeping bag and kind of camp out for the night. <coughs> They then get left alone by predators because their sleeping bag conceals their smell and tastes gross. Well, it, it's a cool trick, but um, I think I'll stick to traditional methods. Yeah. But you haven't heard the best bit. When they get up, they have to eat their way out. Just like the squirtless sea squirt, the sand pooing and snot sleeping bag eating parrotfish eat their own body bits. I mean, why waste all that snot when you've spent all night sleeping in it? Uh, I wasn't going to, really. That'd be gross. Yeah, parrotfish are gross. Hey, Jim, why don't the puffer fish blush? Because the seaweed. Oh, you know it. Oh, you're a true recycler, Barney. And exceptionally bad jokes. They don't let anything go to waste in this ocean world. Poo, snot, brains, tin cans, human heads, they reuse the lot. First up, the sand-noshing sea cucumber. Weird. They eat the sand that was formerly poo from the rock-chomping parrotfish. Now that is recycling. How about this ocean waste disposal machine? The tiger shark will chow down on anything that floats his way, even rotten turtles. Ew! Ew, double ew. Thank goodness for the cute and clean Christmas tree worm, who filters the water and makes a home in damaged coral. Put your hands in the air. Da -da -da -da, like you have leg hair. All together now for MC Crabster. Wicked, wicked, wow. He's not just dancing, he also filters the water with his feathery feelers. But for a true reef party atmosphere, head on down to the rocking wreck. One man's waste is an ocean's playground. Try telling that to the hermit crab that ended up with a bit of corner pipe. Our hermit crabs will do anything for someone else's thrown away shell. Ooh, wanna swap? <laughs> the decorator crab. No balls of fluff, coral or algae will go to waste with this dreamy dresser. But some recyclers take it a step too far, like the piratey frigate birds, nicking regurgitated food from the mouths of baby birds. The ocean is full of food pinchers. Loads of creatures sit back and wait for spawning time, knowing they'll get a free meal with all those eggs floating around. But luckily, there are thousands of them. And thousands of the deadliest, nastiest, evil parasites. But luckily for the fish, the cleaner ass love to feast on fishy skin. But the most extreme example of waste not want not you'll ever find is the, not very interesting apart from this fact, sea squirt. They eat their own brains and the spine and the tail. When they finish with it, of course. At least the parrotfish knows he gets a good brekkie when he wakes up and eats his uh, snot sleeping bag. You see, Jem, we're never going to be able to compete. Not even an ounce of snot or deadly parasite goes to waste in that watery world. <sighs> well, I'll stick to my apple necklace, thank you. Now, did you get me earrings to match? 